It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know what they all going? Hey, man. Another day. Another dollar. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Exactly. Check it, man. Don't go to shouting just yet. <laughs> it's not. We got a special guest in here today, y'all. She really don't need no introduction. Really, to be honest with you, she's she's a lady of sound. Miss mm-hmm. Jade Arnell, what's going on, baby? Hey. Man, <laughs> I, I, I'm so happy to get you here, man. Somebody sent me some music, girl, and I started listening to it. I ain't going to lie. It, was, it got a little... Heated for a minute. I wanted to see my wife, so as I listened to a few of them songs. <laughs> That's how yeah. supposed to make it feel. That means I'm doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have a dope voice, man, Thank and you. just um, I mean, just to hear you, uh, um, you know, sing. It was a it's delight when we first seen you. It was uh, at awarded two lives, awarded two lives. Uh, yeah. uh, funeral. I don't man. even think you were paying attention. I was like, baby, listen, yeah, yeah, listen, she, yeah, yeah. Listen to that. I'm like, tap in, can, tap in. I'm like. She can yeah. really go. Listen uh, to that. I'm like, who is, who is she? Uh, and then I didn't have to ask that question very much longer because, of course, the preacher, he definitely said who you are. Rush. You, yeah. yeah, and you definitely introduced yourself. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Let me let me make a note of that yeah. name. Exactly, man. And I just thank God for bringing you into our presence, man. No, thank you for having me. This is a dope opportunity, so I'm happy to be here. Man, so th- we're going to get into it a little bit. I know you like to run down yes. through there. Okay. Because I like to introduce you as a person to mm-hmm. our listeners, mm-hmm. not really you as a musician. Right. We want to know about you growing up um, with your parents or with your mom, dad, your siblings, where you're from. Mm-hmm. I mean, I need to know everything you okay. went through as a child. Okay. So, um, hi, everybody. I am Jada Arnell. I have literally been singing since I was three years old. I grew up in Dallas, but um, we've lived in, like, obviously... Duncanville, DeSoto, we live kind of south of Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I grew up there. Um, I live in DeSoto now with my parents. But, um, you know, I have three siblings, an older brother, shout out to Brian, his wife, my nieces. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an older sister, Ariel, and then I have a younger brother. His name is Colin. Okay, I was about to say, are you the baby girl? I'm, I'm the baby girl. Baby yes, girl. The baby girl. And then, you know, I have two parents, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, they've been married for almost 30 years. See, so that's a blessing. A blessing. Blessed to have them in my life. They're huge. My whole family, just huge supporters. So they have literally... Um, been supporting me since the mm-hmm. beginning mm-hmm. Um, when I was younger my mom used to put me in these like singing competitions and you know she saw something in me so she was just like I'm just wrong did with your it. mom used to sing or so the dad? crazy thing is that nobody really in my like immediate family they, they don't really sing mm-hmm. my mom plays the piano mm-hmm. and um, so where did you get that voice from? I don't know so my dad's my, my papa he's uh, no longer alive but my dad's dad um, you know he used to sing so I think maybe that's where I got it from um, but yeah nobody like in you know my, my close close family they don't really sing so I think when I was younger my mom she used to play in a jazz band she actually still plays in a jazz band today oh, okay. and yeah she used to take my sister and I to rehearsals with her so I used to kind of just be like mesmerized I don't know I just would watch and can you play instruments? I actually cannot play like full on play. I can dabble on the keys a little bit. I wish uh, if I could pick you up the get guitar. Your mom I to know. Teach you. Mom, trust me, she used to give us lessons when we were kids, but it's harder trying to teach your kids than <laughs> yeah, it is exactly, kids exactly. Because exactly. she can fuss at us and all of that stuff. So we kind of gave that up. But you know, I'm definitely trying to dabble back into. Um, learning how to play instruments because I think it's mm-hmm. very important, especially as an artist. Of you want to be able to offer to offer more than just you know all around. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, so mm-hmm. which is kind of why I. Um, but nowadays you can go on YouTube and learn anything. And learn you want. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I actually started um, learning how to play guitar last year, mm-hmm. um, so that was fun. You know, it it it's very. It's not super difficult, but, you know, you get, like, calluses on your fingers because mm-hmm. of the string. So that was kind of fun. Um, so, you know, I'm going to try. You're like, nah, I'm going to stop. I don't need no Girl, calluses. I couldn't get my nails done. <laughs> I couldn't do nothing. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I can give up uh, having my nails done. But um, it's a great instrument to learn how to play all of them. So yeah. even with, you know, my voice being my instrument, I think my a main piano instrument, would be great for you. For sure, yeah. I like them all. I think it's mm-hmm. dope when people play multiple instruments. Like, I think it's super, super so cool. So then you, you, you had to love, you, you had to very, very much love Prince, right? 
Yes, but, but, and Prince and her, because her is definitely I love her. another person. She plays like oh five, God. six instruments. Right. She's amazing, and I've gotten I've gotten to see her live. So really, yeah. Have she, you gotten to meet her personally? No, I haven't gotten to meet her. I wish, but um, I did get to see her live, and I watched her get on the mic. I watched her hop from the microphone to mm -hmm. playing on bass, getting on the drums, playing mm -hmm. the guitar, and getting on keys. Like she's literally amazing. Oh literally my. amazing so tell me about like the first time when your mom because you said you started singing at three yeah the first time your mom actually because i'm sure she would have told you the story uh -huh. that she heard your voice for the first time and knew that you had something so i think like i said i've been singing since i was three right. i think my mom heard me at church um singing. i grew up singing obviously in church and, you know, I would just, I was one of those kids that was like, you know, I want to sing the lead or I want to be not necessarily in the front, but, you know, just pick me, pick me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, they kind of saw that people started, you know. So you were an outgoing child from the get-go. Very outgoing. My mom, thank God, recorded our whole childhood. So we have so many home videos That's of my good. sister and I. Uh, and my sister doesn't sing at all, but there's a cute little video of us. She can be the dancer. You, she's my hype <laughs> girl. She's, you know, that's what she is. But um, there's a little video of us. My grandma had just bought us this, like, little play keyboard. Mm -hmm. And I had the mic in my hand. Um, and I was we were singing, I think, Silent Night or something like Aww. that for Christmas. So um, those are, like, some of my some things that I can kind of remember, but I'm pretty sure my mom saw my talent in church for sure because I was always, like, eager to go to choir rehearsal with her. Mm -hmm. Um and just to be singing. So, you know, when I kind of told her that I wanted to do it is when she took it upon herself to kind of take it to the next level. What's your favorite song that your mom used to play or sing or anything like that that you can remember? I don't necessarily remember a favorite song that my mom used to play. I can probably tell you my favorite hymn from okay. church, though, is um, I Surrender All. Mm. Yeah. So it's, I love it's that. like my favorite. Yeah, yeah, let me get a little bit of that Yeah, right now. Oh, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> that song can be very emotional. Like when you start to put all your all oh, into no, that for song. Sure. I love it. So. I love it. Go ahead. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily give. I surrender all. I that's it, man. Just stop. No, 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 uh -uh, no, no, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, man, listen, I know. man. I was, Say, man. Hey, man, don't do that, man. I'm going to get on my knees and get prostrate I'm right here on the do floor. I'm, a little yeah, yeah, I'm not going to mm. play with you today. Now, we're not going to do favorites. this. I know. Man, hey, man. You sound like you was going to hit them high you notes. Really like listen, you was about man. To, uh, you don't expect this to come from this little body, okay? This that guy, I've gotten You don't expect that, man. You know, and and I know we're going to go down through it. We're going to say, we're going get her to do something else but, but it you was had just, training for that mm -hmm. you had to have training because that, that didn't come naturally to hit those notes so the crazy thing is that you know before i got to high school so i went to booker t washington high school for the okay. performing and visual arts um Perfect. that's where i actually trained i trained there so before that i was just completely raw talent right you know and so my mom she actually went to booker t as well um in the 80s and you know, she had this dream, and I had the same dream too, that I really wanted to go there, just to follow in my mom's footsteps. And I knew that once I got to that school, I was gonna be able to perfect my craft mm -hmm. and just get better at singing. Um, I got to Booker T and it was just, it was just straight from there where I was just like, this is what I wanna do with my life. Like, um, you know, I, I was in choir, I was in jazz singers, I was in r and I was in gospel, like I was very- Did you get your opera training there as well? Or yeah, so I, got, I became classically trained at Booker T. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was in, you know, regular choir. We did UIL, which is kind of where I not necessarily fell in love, but I just grew a great appreciation for classical music. It's beautiful. Um, I tell people all the time, if you're a singer, you have to make sure that you just know the basics. Like same thing with dance, you know, make sure you know how to do ballet and with theater, make sure you know, like, you know, Shakespeare mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff, because, you know, the classics is that's that's the foundation literally i got a question about uil because our kids be doing uil you uh -huh. know they're in high school and you know middle school mm -hmm. but when you think about a school like booker t washington who have like 
singers yeah. like you. <laughs> is that a different category of UIL or you is the same thing? No, I'm like, because it's unfair for y'all to be entering. You'd be really surprised. So a lot of schools, um, we all, every school learns the same music when we mm -hmm. go to UIL. Um, there are there are times when um, we'll do like our own pieces, but at the beginning of the year, um, every student who wants to enter and you want to make it to like all state and stuff like that, we all want the same music. So they're they're like DeSoto. They have a great program. Duncanville has a really good program as well. Um, I'm trying to think what other schools. There are a lot of other schools who are just as talented. Some kids just don't. Some kids really just don't want to go to Booker T. Mm -hmm. um, and I get it. <laughs> well, because that school that it's mainly for performing Put arts. And then a lot of so kids want to do like, sports. We right. don't have sports. I so we had to. A lot of people had to sacrifice a lot. Like me, I mm -hmm. used to cheer. So I didn't get to cheer. There was no track, nothing. But I was like, you know, I mean, I you want to sing more. Than I want to sing more than anything. I'm like, right. mm, y'all can have that. So I went to Booker T. I actually did not get in my freshman year. I got in my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. So I tried again. So it's hard in. to get in. It is a it's it's it a, it, it is a little harder to get in. Um, because they're very, um, they're just they're very strict on auditions. What did um, you do the second time that you didn't do the first time? Why you got in? I don't know. I think maybe there were different people in the room, different okay. judges, um, who probably just saw a lot of potential. Which is crazy because it is harder to get in after your freshman year than anything. So when I got in sophomore year, I was like, it's go time. I learned how to read music in three weeks um, because you have to know how to read music for you know UIL all state. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to, you have to know how to read music for all of that. So. That's honestly why I was just like, it's go time. So I got mm -hmm. in. I'm like, I'm already a year late. I'm kind of behind. So I just kind of wanted to pick up the pace. And, you know, by the time I graduated, I was, yeah. So tell me about your first gig after leaving there. Um, after when leaving you high want, school? Right. After leaving high school. When you said, you know what, I'm taking this serious. Because you already was taking it serious right. there. But to actually move forward and say, okay, I need some networking. I need connections. I need to get where I need to go. Yes. Yeah, so I didn't apply to any schools um, in Texas for college. So I took my talents to California. I went mm. to college in Cali at um, a college called the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. Um, and I went to California and, you know, I had already had really, really good training um, in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my work ethic came not only from Booker T, but a lot of it came from this place called the Black Academy of Arts and Letters, yeah. T-Ball. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's home for me. Mm -hmm. So Mr. King literally just, you I'm know. I'm trying to get him on here, Mr. Yeah. King. When I tell, if y'all get that man on this show, he go set it up. Oh, that's good. You I have it, I, to get him here. We hit him up, and they said that they gonna make it happen. You have to get him here. I just need to yes. follow up. He is, he is, you know, the reason why I am the artist that I am today, the performer that I am today. That man has taught me so much, and still teaching me till this day. Um, still, you know, he's like a godfather to me, a great mentor. So a lot of my training came from there. So once I got to college, I was like, oh, this is easy. Like. Um, and I wanted, I knew I wanted to go to school for music, so I ended up going to school for musical theater. So I kind of became a triple threat in college. I was dancing, singing, and acting, doing it mm. all. So I had to take ballet, I had to take jazz, tap. That's good. And I had to take theater as well as music. Um, and musical theater is more centered around like Broadway stuff because mm -hmm. I kind of have like a passion for the um, the arts, Broadway. So I did that, but I really just kind of wanted to go there because I wanted to become a triple threat. Right. So I can do it all now. Um, so I was, you know, learning a lot while I was there and um, L.A. And so young. Yeah, very young. And, you know, I finished four years. I was wow. a 2020 COVID graduate. Um, <laughs> we graduated online. COVID graduate. Yeah. I was. Um, so, you know, I had a great time in L.A. I don't think it was the city for me. Yeah, I was about to say, why did you move back? I moved back because. Because there's more opportunity there. Way, yeah, way more opportunities. But I feel like. Out there, a lot of people are very superficial, and um, because I am from Dallas in the South in general, we they are. There, it's not really judgy. It has like a like a fake feeling being out there. She's um, too real for Cali, and it's not necessarily yeah. the people who are actually from California. It's more so the people who kind of move out move there out and there. they make it. You know what I'm saying? I like get people, it. people who are kind of from Cali, they they chill, they but. Chill. You know, we don't really see them as much. So I was introduced to a lot of people who were, you know, just coming there, moving mm -hmm. there, stuff like that. And I didn't really like the vibe. Um, that's 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 dope that you, you that's self-awareness. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for you to understand that that's not the place for you. Some yeah. people can't figure it out. No. Sometimes people fight with themselves trying because to of what they want. What they a want lot of people, a lot of people wanted me to stay. And I was just like, I would rather if I do ever decide to move to California, I, w I would want to be an established artist because I have I know a lot of people out there paying 
two thousand dollars for a studio apartment with a roommate. That's right. Working two jobs and you're still wanting to pursue a career, meaning you really can't go audition. You can't um you can't book studio sessions. You don't have the time. You don't have any time. You're literally living paycheck to paycheck. And that's just not somewhere I wanna live. Especially when I know music is something that I really Or living do. on somebody's couch. Do you hear me? Like, <laughs> no. I never moved off of campus when I was in college. Just for that reason. I'm not I was like I'm not my parents are already paying enough money for me to go to school mm-hmm. on top of you, you know, wanting to help me pay rent. It was just, I'll stay on campus. And go, I did. You ever go down to Atlanta? Was just about the to thing, say. The thing red, ain't it? <laughs> the go- so, you know, last year, um, or no, it's been almost two years, 2020, um, I was going to move to Atlanta with my best friend, Kennedy. She actually ended up moving there because she's in grad school there at SCAD. But I was going to move with her because I actually do like Atlanta. And it feels a little bit more like, like home. Like that's uh-huh. right. And that's why I really like it. The opportunities are there. But, you know, I just feel like God's timing is everything. Mm-hmm. And if something brings pulls me out there, I'll go. But I feel like right now he has me doing something in Dallas. I don't know what it is. I mean, obviously music. But I just think that something, you know, has really just settled here for me. And um, I kind of want to stay until I see, you know, obviously what that is and what. What, what I'm getting, what I'm feeling from what you're saying is you've learned how to be still mm-hmm. and let God. Yeah. That's really what it is, yeah. because when you get that increment from him, you mm-hmm. just like, you know what? I know he has a big picture, so yeah. he knows a big picture. So I'm just going to sit and wait. Yep. Well, that's that's one way to look at it. But, um, you know, a prophet is without honor in his own country. So you, you definitely want to try to spread your wings and fly a little more. Of go course. to different places. Of course. Uh, if you're not going there to stay, at least frequent those places of because course. people need to see you. People yep. need to be exposed to mm-hmm. your talent. Um Jada, you can only go so far here in Dallas. No, I agree. You know, and, I uh, agree. Jason I still... Lyric, the Sonio deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was here. Uh, mm-hmm. There's people here that sound like they should be everywhere. Yeah. And if you sound like you should be everywhere, then you ought to be everywhere. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, so I it ain't no, it ain't no, I it ain't no ill fans or butts about people, it. People will call me from LA. I'll fly out for gigs in LA yeah, that's and I'll right. fly to other places that people ever need me to sing. So I'm, I, I kind of, I dabble, you know, I'm just, I live here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, but, you can move anywhere. A yeah, plane, just but um, I know yeah. I, I fly out to LA at least probably six, seven times a year to do gigs, to mm-hmm. sing at events. Um, so yeah. I'm you just keep the connection mm-hmm. going. Oh, for sure. I'm, I I haven't burned any bridges. So, you know, people still call. They want to they wanna have me. They want me to come perform, sing. So I definitely. As they should. Yeah. As what? they should. You Texas finest. Y'all better <laughs> stop playing. Y'all know Look. y'all got to tap into Jada, man. Look. I don't know what y'all doing. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> What's the hey. most beneficial um, thing you've learned living in California um, where, as your career is concerned? Oh, that's a good question. The most beneficial thing that I've learned living in California be true to who you are. Don't change for anybody. Um, not even if you think people will like you if you are a certain way. Always stay true to who you are. It's okay to evolve as a person, but just never lose yourself. And I learned that because in California, a lot of people go out there and you literally just get lost because there are a thousand, hundreds of thousands of other people, other people trying to do the same thing that you do. So you become discouraged when you see everybody else getting put on. You're like, when is my time coming? When is my time coming? It's not coming for me. They moved out here and they already singing behind so-and-so, so-and-so. And, and, you know, you start to want to change who you are and, you know, try to figure out what it is for you to get there. But um, I learned that just literally being myself is what gets me a lot of, not not only gigs, but what draws people to me. And that's not to toot my own horn, but a lot of people, they can relate to somebody who's just real, who's chill, who mm-hmm. not, you know, very over the top and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So um, I get told that a lot, like, you have a really great personality or you, you're you super down to earth or, you know, um, you seem really chill. Because a lot of people think I'm mean before they meet me. I have, like, a resting bitch face. <laughs> not <laughs> really. Man, no. I seen you. I seen That's you just the Sagittarius to me. You I see don't that? know. She going to say that. Man, you, you look don't. so dope, man. See, and, but people think I'm mean. They're I, like, and I, you know what? I I stopped thinking of that as a negative until when somebody DM'd me one day because I posted on my Instagram and they were like, I don't think you're mean. I think that people sometimes are intimidated by your confidence. Exactly. And so I was like, oh, wow. That's what it is. Um, So I was like, hey, because, you know, I, I used to try to really soften up. Like, I don't want anybody to think I'm an asshole or I'm mean or anything like that. So I just try to I try to. I try to keep it, but I'm just like, it's just who I am, you know? But when yeah. people meet me, they like, you dope. Like, you're super cool. You're super chill. So I'm like, yeah, that's just who I am. I didn't get to L.A. and act Hollywood. I'm like, I'm only here for four years, so I'm here to, you know, 
get my education. And at that time, I thought I was going to stay, but I ended up coming back home. So your gift will make room for you. Mm. Yeah. You know that. And, mm-hmm. and, and like you said, everything you said wrapped up in a bow is self awareness again. So, yep. When you last spoke about being out there and still being who you are, yeah. it's still centered around, you know, um, you know, the Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Yeah, you're a royal priesthood. When you really know who you are and tapped into who you are, you mm-hmm. can't nobody move you off of who you are. My mm-hmm. God. You yep. see what yep. I'm saying? So you you <laughs> got to just stand in who you are and really be that confidence. I got it. Yeah, you got to have confidence to sit on these microphones yeah. and talk that talk. Yeah. Or else people ain't going to believe you. That's they don't care what look nobody at you says. And tell. Mm-hmm. They can tell if you're not really comfortable. Exactly. See? Yeah. And that, that's the whole game. So understanding who you are is the most essential element to success. Yeah. And living in a world where so many people are fake. Do you hear me? Because you can well, be whoever you want to be Man, I won't even dye my beard because I don't want to be fake. Yeah. I just don't do nothing fake. She know it. I can't play no games with the fake, uh, yeah, do the, uh-uh. I, you, you, what you see is what you get. Literally. And and if I talk to you, it, it's going. how is it going to be? I get to operate. Whoever called me, uh-huh. they call Very me with robo forward. calls and get an earful. The Jehovah Witness show up, they get an earful. Whoever you want it, you can get it. Look, I hey, <laughs> I heard that. I Not know that's because right. you got you got to be you, you got to be straight be. up. You have to man. be. Mm-hmm. You have to be. I, so I want to know. Um, mm-hmm. So we're gonna get into your album in a minute, but okay. tell me the name of your first album you've ever done. Oh, this is this is this is actually my first album. But this the, is yes, this is my first album. But the funny thing is, I'm, <laughs> this is really funny. So I used to be in a group with my cousins. Um, what was y'all call? This is Jag. So they're twins, Jada and Garland Garrett. Oh, okay. Um, and we were probably they're about two years older than me, so I was probably eleven. They were probably thirteen, and we put out a CD. We had a showcase. We only had three songs on it. Okay. We had a showcase in somewhere in Dallas I can't remember where but um we were like we felt like we were superstars you know our family family friends came from everywhere after the show they were running up like just I mean you know how you have to gas kids of like can I get your autograph hey. so I used to tell people like yeah I put out an album when I was you know 11 I wrote all the songs <laughs> I didn't even know what I was talking about on them songs. I was about to say, what inspired those Girl, songs? <laughs> it, they were just just typical 11 year old songs like I think oh I think one of the songs was Oh, it was something about the way I walked and the way I talked, but I'm just like, I knew I was a boss when I was a kid, so I'm sure <laughs> that's why I was talking like that. But uh, <laughs> this is actually my very first, very, um, first. very first album. So what took you so long? Life. Um, I, I went through, and I sometimes go through a lot of these phases, just being transparent, mm-hmm. where I am extremely lazy. And I've gotten out of it now, but I used to be How a... How long were you... Extremely lazy for it. How many well, not years? a long period of time. About to say. A lot of it um, really kind of slowed down when I went to college because the producer who I work with, shout out to Gumbo, he is in Dallas, and so I was in L.A. And obviously, okay. I was very busy when I was in college. I was in a lot of shows, um, classes, so I didn't I didn't have time to get to a studio. I mean, I didn't even know how that would work. He's in Dallas. I'm in L.A., so that kind of put a lot on pause. But my lazy spell happened in 2020 when I graduated from college because mm-hmm. I kind of went through post-grad depression. Because you're like, what now? Literally. Um, and because my senior year didn't end the way that I thought it was going to end. Um, I didn't get to do senior showcase. Because I didn't, you know, I got, I got cast as a lead mm-hmm. in a show. Didn't get to do that. Um, we have this thing at AMDA called Spotlight where you kind of just go and sit in a room full of agents and managers and all that stuff. And they just, they, they start, you know, I want to be your agent. I want to, and I didn't get that opportunity. So I got home to Dallas COVID kind of happened around March and you know we got an email saying you guys we'll be back in three weeks yeah we never went back I graduated at home with the TV you know everybody sitting around the TV just watching our pictures pop up you know we didn't get to walk so I just went through a phase where I was like slightly depressed because I'm like I'm not in school anymore this is life life has officially started you know there is no you got to figure out what you're going to do. You know, I was living with my parents, and I still live with my parents rent free. Mm. Let me tell y'all, hey. don't, don't ever. Yeah. Let me If you're not no, ready to move out, let me say no, this. you ain't got a bill. Yeah, you but, don't but, have a bill that you no, have to pay? Look. No, but let me say this right quick, because Sean Cotton was on here from Say Cheese, and he <laughs> made a statement about that, and he showed the fact that if he hadn't have been able to stay with his parents till he was almost right. 30, yeah. right, he wouldn't have been. The person Say Cheese that. probably wouldn't have never came out. I believe And it. he's very successful yep. now. But I so, believe you know, no, I think that's dope, and and I didn't think of it that way because I kick you out. You know, and that's what you know, I do. Wait a minute, let me tell you how I do you. 
18, you out. I got to get you up what? out of here. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like That's them. I'm not like them parents. I'm not like them parents. See? If you was because my child. Because that was what happened to you. Oh, yeah. No, no, that ain't it. No, no, no. Life need to grab you a little bit and show you who in charge. You no. need a light bill as soon as you turn 18 just so you can get a rough feel of well, it. Well, so I. Yeah, that's why I ask if Do you pay any of the bills? I don't pay any bills in the house, but I don't ask for money. I don't. Well, damn. No, they I need mean, to give you a bill. As you I don't shouldn't. pay no bills. And I think the and reason... do you eat... Do you buy food or yeah, eat Yeah, I buy my own. My nigga, you is over there living with No, but you eat your parents' food, food, too. <laughs> you is eating good. See? I don't ask. I don't ask for money. Boy, I wish I could money. get you over there with me for one day, boy. No. I'd have kicked you out. I'd say, uh-uh. look, don't you... You know that little old... What is that thing? Had a little stick with the bag on it? Uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. You had to get the hell no, on out. No, I think because she's a girl, too. That, I don't give a damn. My daughter I had to really, get out. like that. Too. I like mom, your daddy. He, sometimes he thinks my mom kind of babies my little <laughs> brother because you know he was like, "Well, I was doing this at 15 and mom, uh-huh. that's not normal. It's not normal. Well, it is You're normal, baby. I started working at nine years old. That's not okay. And I was very <laughs> active by 12. I was really pretty much getting paid a whole check. That's by the time so I turned good. 18, when I was a hell young, of a man. When you're, you're that young, you need to just focus on being a kid. No. But you know, I really appreciate my parents, though, because, I mean, obviously, you know, I I work and, you know, I don't have to ask I hope for you money. Say you say, that's exactly what I was about I to hope say. You Are you saving? saving? Of course. I don't want to leave my parents forever now. I believe it's coming. But, I mean, um, you know. <laughs> You know, but I don't really <laughs> have to ask for money. But you know, my parents they will go above and beyond for their children. Like I know, um, if there's something that I actually like, my first music video, um, I was like, I told my mom I want to do this. She's like, okay, cool. I was like, will you go half? She's like, of course. Like they, I, I don't know. I think my parents just really see a lot in me, and they really want me to to succeed. But they also don't want me to just. They also didn't want to just push me out into the world and then, you know, literally mess up to the point where there is no, not necessarily Jay. no return. Jay. But as a parent, hold on, but as a parent, if you, if my child come to me and say, hey, um, will you pay half? Every, any parent will say yes. No, no, no. If you not come and say, parent. if you come and say, mommy, can you pay for all of this? Yeah. Then that's totally different. Not, not any parent. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no. I got uh, let me tell I you something. My parents. My great. kid's been working at this store. This store been here 15 years. That's really good. They've been working here the whole time they've been alive. Yeah. I am really crazy. Like, I <laughs> really feel like they don't know nothing else but to go when it's time to go. Hey. I really, and they, at, at 10, I can remember Malachi saying, I know I got to get out at 18. I said, yeah, nigga, you got to get the hell on up out here. <laughs> See, I don't <laughs> want that. I don't, I don't want that for my kids. But my daughter and my son, that's my son right there. He, the oldest he, one, and he, he knows. Doing this, he knows. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, you wouldn't have stayed with me because I'd have kicked you out. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I took care of you, though. I just See, did. some people really want to move out. No, but, but see, I don't even live in an environment where my parents make me feel like, oh, I got to get out of here. I'm just like. He stayed with his grandma. He didn't stay with me or his mama. The nigga was different. That means what? That mean that mean you was getting on his nerves? No, we never did. Really, no, I just buy him stuff. I just cash him out and keep going. Cash him out and keep going. You know? <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. No, but I get it. Everybody is different. I'm just yeah. you know my parents. They they definitely believe in me. I think they're doing a dope job. And they know that. I mean, right now, like if I were to move out, a lot of I just. I don't think I would really be. It'd break their heart. Do you heart. have a boyfriend if you don't it mind me asking? You can't bring that, that dude over to my house? I can't do what? No, don't bring him over here. Why? What? Woo, I'd be mad. Boy, don't He's bring him over here. He's one of Don't those bring parents. that nigga over here. Why? Woo, I'd be mad. You can take that nigga somewhere else, but do not bring him to my house. I'm 24. I don't give a dang if you pay I'm not 44. 17. You ain't paying no bills He's in like, here. He's like, yeah. the only way you can bring him over is <laughs> if you this is going to be That's for real. Your husband. I'm, I'm oh, wow. really like that. Because yeah. he don't I mean, want I get it. He doesn't I want to play me. I, got, I don't want to play with nobody. No, I get it. No, I, I get it 100%. Yeah, because then you might break you. up with him and then up with another guy you. and you yep. have to meet another guy. I don't want to no. meet you. I will slap you. I don't want to meet oh, you. No, everybody don't you come to the house. I don't want to meet you. Everybody don't come to the house now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, the whole game is, listen, you, you got to understand, everybody was raised different. Life is going to yeah. grab you anyway. If something happened to your oh, parents, for sure. God forbid. For sure. But you better be ready for life because oh, life is going to tap you on your shoulder and say, Jada, um, I'm really ready to get down with you. No, I get it. <laughs> You've been I running it. for a while, but I'm here at the door whenever you leave, it. right? I feel like I'm I'm almost there. I feel like I'm almost there. And I also, you know, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, technically... 
was in college for four years. So coming from college, obviously I didn't work while I was, I didn't have, to, I could not work while I was in college at all. I would, so start, I would start classes at nine in the morning. I wouldn't be done until six. And then if I was in a show, that was from seven to 1130. Mm -hmm. And then I had to still do homework, make sure I'm studying for tests, blah, 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 blah. So I didn't, my mom was like, no, I don't want you working. Man, you do it. Like I said, they had it right. I mean, like, yeah. like Jada, yeah. I'm, I'm just giving you hell. But if no, you no, really, no, 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 if you're responsible like yeah. that, I'm going to support you to the end. Yeah. And you did go to school and where you, did you, you was at the college, huh? At the college, finished. That, that was cool. Like, okay, now what you going to do? I've been coaching on the way. Now what you going to do when you leave there? <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing, when you were talking about COVID and how it affected you. Um, I thought it was affected leaving, like that. I never yeah. thought about college students because, you know, um, our kids were in high school yeah. and middle they school. They was affected. So she would tell us about how the seniors, when they were graduating, they couldn't, you know, graduate they in could. person and all of that. And she, even now, when she was telling us about um, this year prom, she's like, she, I got to go. I got to go because yeah. I don't know what next year, you know, you don't yeah. ever know. It's you such an uncertainty know. in school right uh -huh. now. So you have to enjoy every, every day. moment. I'm, it, I'm so glad COVID happened at the end of my college, you know, whatever, four years, because... I had a great college experience. I had mm -hmm. fun. Um, and not crazy fun, because like I said, we really didn't have a lot of time to do anything. But me and my three roommates, we and we are still tight to this day. One of them just left Dallas. He was here last week. Um, but we're close. So we had the best of times, whether it was just sitting in our little room, because we had like kind of on-campus apartments, cracking jokes, watching movies, making up dances. Like, we had a great time. So I wouldn't trade my college experience for anything. But, you know... I'm just, hey, I'm in a place where I'm just trying to eat, take my time and hopefully I, I, by the I, I time that I move out, <sighs> when I move out, I can pay off my parents' house. I can pay off every car. Awesome. I can buy them another house. Like, I just kind of want to be, because right. I know it's coming from me. Like, I don't have a plan B at all because I know that my plan A will work. Hey, That's awesome. I want to get into your music a yeah, little that's what bit. I want um, to ask you about. It? No, I want to ask about songs. I'm gonna get into my songs. Uh, that that one with Jason Lyric, being that he'd been on the yeah. show, "Down for Me." What mm -hmm. was the What was the whole inspiration of that? How did you guys make that happen? So "Down for Me" was actually written by um, somebody who's uh, on my team. Her name is Michi. Okay. Shout out to Michi. Michi Shout wrote Michi. "Down for Me," and obviously Jason wrote his uh, verse. But um, she, where were we? I can't remember exactly where we recorded it, but um, my producer was like, so Michi wrote this song, and I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and he was like, so I want you to record it, and I'm like, cool. So I came in, um, I recorded it, and I fell in love with it, because the song is great. Um, I actually just recently looked at like my streams and stuff, and it's the most streamed song on the mm -hmm. album. Really? Yes. Uh, at first, it was the first song, What You Got, but after that, like Down For Me just kind of shot his way mm -hmm. up, so I'm like, okay, Down For Me. But um, yeah, Michi wrote that song and we were trying to find somebody who would be great to, to get on it because I knew we wanted a feature. Um, and I had met Jason maybe some months prior before I had even recorded the song. And so he came up in the conversation like, who, we, should, we should get Jason on this. And so we asked and he was like, I got you. Um, and like, that's, that's, that's my dog. So he, he did it, sent his verse back and I was like, this is hot. Like, this is hot. Mm -hmm. And so I was very pleased with it. And um, I recently had my listening party and everybody really, really was, they were vibing to the song. So um, I love the song a lot. I don't know where the inspiration came from with Michi when she wrote it, but I was like, your pen game is strong. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you for mm -hmm. giving me this song. So mm -hmm. That's dope, <laughs> yeah. man. That's At your dope. listening party, which one was the favorite? It was between Down For Me, uh, What You Got, and Rain Dance. Probably those three. Because mm. um, What You Got is the very first song, and I picked... Um, I wanted that song to be first. I was just like, I don't know why, but I, it just it just gives me, let's start the album out like this. Mm. Um, it's very simple, just like, you know, a little guitar strum in my voice. So I just wanted to make sure, I, I always want to make sure people know that I can sing. Above mm. anything, I can sing. So um, whether, you know, you might hear me on the track with an extra little, with some production or something yeah, like that, but yeah. I, I, can, I can sing. So... That's that um that song is very uh very simple kind of pure and I like it a lot. Um but I would say what you got rain dance and down for me. And a lot of people didn't really I um know that Jason was in the room until I was like, yeah, so shout out to Jason and I people were like, "Oh my gosh, like What did you have a listening party at? Um I had it at the studio that I recorded most of the okay. songs at G5 Studios okay. um in Irving, kind okay. of the Irving area. So we had it there and um it was a great night just surrounded by a lot of love, close friends, family and you know, they everybody really liked the album. So 
Mm-hmm. What you got for me? What th- What's that song about? The one that you say is the first one on there. What, what you got? It's like yeah. what you got. Well, you, you, know? Know, you know, you think you you, you can just check. Who, your wrote, who wrote that one? <laughs> um, Michi, myself, and Gumbo. We wrote we wrote what you got. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. And and, and so. Um, how was the process of making that one? Was it just, you said it was simple, so it's... It, it was very simple. So Michi, I believe, wrote maybe the first first verse, Gumbo, or maybe she did the hook, the very ending of the song, because there was no ending. Um, the, I'ma have you like, damn, she fine, oh, she mine. I wrote all that. Uh, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that part, because um, I was like, the song is, it, it wasn't really missing something, but I was like, it's too short, it's too short, and I like it a lot, so we added that part, and I wrote that in. So is that the process? Like one person starts off and then the next person like, okay, it needs this. How does that work? So sometimes, yes. Uh, Sometimes we'll start from scratch. Like one of the songs, Open Flame, that Michi and I wrote, we started from scratch. We were on FaceTime. We were up till probably about two in the morning. Uh, We were delirious because I was so tired. I'm a granny. Uh, I like to go to bed early. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I was tired. But we wrote Open Flame from scratch. And then What You Got, I believe she had already had a verse written. So we were like, we might as well just Just finish it. So we finished it. Okay. Um, but it just depends. Like, I have a single that came out before the album, Niggas Ain't Loyal. I wrote that one all by myself. Um, my cousin, his name is Louis, um, he produced that one. So I was just, I asked him for a track, and I was like, okay, I'm going to write to it. I was that it. because something you were going through? At that time, actually, no. Sometimes I just be writing because I'm like, I mean, I hate to say this, but sometimes it is kind of easier to write, like, a song about somebody doing you wrong. Mm. Like, it's just, it's just easier. So I wrote uh, Niggas Ain't Loyal. I wrote that in, like, maybe 2019, and I put it out in 2021. Okay. In January last year. So it just depends on what the vibe is. Gumbo, who is my producer, he writes a lot. He's a great writer. Um so a lot of the songs, sometimes he'd write a verse and be like, okay, let's do the hook, let's do another verse, let's do you know a little outro or something like that. So it really just kind of depends. He's wow. definitely helped me push my pen game, though, for sure. So um, <clears throat> so who produced this music? Yeah, so uh, Southwest what? Music, okay. which is Gumbo and his, um, his friend Justin, they both helped produce. And then October 1st, who is another... I've heard of him. Yeah, he kind of, he, Jason, he and Jason are kind of, you know. Right. That's where you heard uh-huh. of him. That's probably where. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, he produced uh, one of the tracks on the song as well. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's dope, man. Um, So, you know, I, I, you know, I really, really enjoyed just talking to you. And, and, Thank and, and, you. And, and I really like to sit down. Um, So get the top three artists of all times out of this young whippersnapper yes. here. Yes, what is your top three artists of all times, dead or alive? My top three? Yes. Any genre? Ooh. Does it have to be three? It's just three. Okay, for me? Number one. Michael. Number two. I should have knew that. Stevie. Number three. That's dope. Stevie was last night, too, just mm-hmm. letting you know. Number three is Beyonce for me. Awesome. Beyonce. So we, if I was, if it was, I was somebody, say, Quincy Jones and I was gonna give you a big break and you had to <laughs> sing a song for me. What song would it be? And how would you sing it? Mm. If I had to sing a song for Quincy, mm-hmm. sheesh. Yeah. That's a really good question. I know it, I get down like that. I don't <laughs> even if he's like just sing something. You get you need to give me something. Uh and and and, and this could make you or break you. Yeah, and and he say, look, you look, I have got, and you know, song. and you know what he gonna say next? Hey, look, man, I'm a very busy man. I ain't got all day. You're right. And then, <laughs> most, it'll probably be a gospel song. I feel like that's what I feel like I could give a lot of. Okay, okay, okay go ahead. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself, and some. Times you how to speak victory during the test, and no matter how you feel, speak a word and you will be healed. Speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh. Man, amazing. amazing, man. Listen, man, I ain't playing with you no more, Jada. I, I, you know what, man? I, I, 
Man, that's your gift, bro. Gospel music is something else, man. And I know. You gonna make a gospel album? I don't know. You Girl, know what? I got to have a gospel album. Oh, you can do it, mix it. You, it's a the new day. The reason why I feel like it's man. easier. Well, no, I could have sang probably anything. You can sing anything. When a lot of people, when they ask me to sing, and the reason why I kind of pick gospel songs is because it's easier to show my vocal ability. Correct. I feel like because R and B has changed so much nowadays that people are expecting to he- like. People don't be singing like that how they used to sing no, on R and B songs, no. mm-hmm. um, like they have back then. Even on my album, like I'm singing, but um, I feel like if you really are trying to hear uh, my voice, if, I, if so somebody's much. like, "Can I hear like what you got?" I'm gonna sing a gospel because I know I can build. I can probably add a little couple runs in there. Do a and there's something. much more emotions yeah. in gospel songs yeah, than anything no, else. No, yeah. it's some songs. Like I said, that Patty, that that uh, Renetta song. It's it's some songs out. No, there. it's for sure yeah, a lot. But of songs. it's just not the newer songs like you yeah. said. Yeah, and I you know, feel like for me as a singer you gotta know what you can sing you like, definitely gotta know like, what you can sing some people some choices like, a lot do you hear me but I'm, why is that why is that so with r&b why r&b is not that way anymore um because just r&b really used to be at the forefront of music if right. you notice hip-hop was not at the forefront exactly um like i don't even there was just a time where there were a lot of R and B artists. Now it's kind of it's not it, it it's not dead. I don't believe that it's dead. I just believe that because hip hop now you have these mega stars. You have the Travis Scotts and the little babies and the baby. You have all of the you know Megan Cardi. Hip hop is at the forefront now, so R and B has kind of been pushed to the back. And a lot of people enjoy these really subtle artists that kind of get on the mic and they sing like this and they like it because it's a vibe. It's a vibe for them. But you had Monica, you had Brandy, you had, some hell you, of had you had all of these girl groups and guy groups like Tank yeah, Whitney. Whitney, who was, you know, typically popish when she first came out, obviously mm-hmm. transitioned to R and B, but you have all of these people who are powerhouses. Um and it just kinda has I think the expectation of singers has just gone down a, a lot. But with man, time, you know, so which is why I I'm said, trying to like. Can you bring it back? No, you, but, I'm trying. <laughs> but I'm I said, trying. I said gospel, and you was like, All right, well, you know. But I was just looking at when I showed you that Kanye West the other night. Yeah. Uh, it's it's something about the way, like when he did Jesus Walk when he first came. Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. It's a thing, it's a niche where if you can get that, if you understand who you are in a way mm-hmm. to where you can bring it across to the masses, yeah. it's dynamic the way that it can take over. Yeah. And you can do anything in you, that your heart desire if you really, really tap into your talent. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. I believe that. But you have to understand that it's a place where it may be to where others have never achieved this. Mm-hmm. This can be something that has never been done in this way before. Yeah. So you have to be willing to be able to take some criticism because uh-huh. that had to be hard for him but then easy at the same time because it's so it became a hit yeah but at the end of the day think about how that was coming out on his first album and people rapping hardcore rap gangster rap uh all type all of lyrics of, yeah, and, and, he, and he and he go with and he go jesus, with jesus wow well. well. it's definitely when you come from the church it'll never leave like you yeah know, it'll right. never it'll never leave i've noticed that with a lot of artists like Regardless of you know what type what type of music you make now, secular or whatever, I just know from especially like artists like maybe like Fantasia, she might have a show, she oh. gonna sing her when I see you mm-hmm. free yourself, but she gonna add total praise in there <laughs> for sure. That's and it's just because cut you off that's, and keep going, you know what I'm saying? Keep, keep going, you quiet. No. Like she gonna sing her songs, you know, my yeah, first love yeah. with Avant. She gonna sing all of them, but she, she gonna she gonna too. add she gonna add some gospel in there because it's just it'll never escape. Me because it's honestly who I am. It's what right. I grew up on. It's it's really where I first got my start. So I think that's why a lot of times I go back to it. Now, what I will say, being a gospel artist, you have to be committed. Yeah. Not saying that I wouldn't be committed, but I do feel like you cannot talk the talk if you're not walking the walk. Um and. Like I said, not saying that I am not, but because I just of wanna, that criticism that you might get, not even necessarily criticism. I just want people to know that it, 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 there's a lot that comes with being a gospel artist. You, I feel like you are way more under the microscope than you are with anything else. You're talking about Again. like what happened to Kirk Franklin, um, when he was going in with his son. Sure, <laughs> but but no, not only that. Again, I go back to the fact of even gospel. You're talking about traditional, traditional, uh huh. I'm talking I'm about talking something about that has never been done before. Oh, okay. Like me, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking about this new thing that could be, because God is bigger than your gospel. Oh, for sure. Y'all not ready for me. Cause it can oh, be no. something that 
is new that he want to give to his people. Mm -hmm. And it can be something that can transcend any type of music that we've ever heard. Yeah. So we got to be willing to understand that it can go there in uh -huh. order to achieve it anyway. Yeah. I'm really serious about no, that. No, I, I, I hear you. I understand. <laughs> so no, I hear you. We, we try to put God in a box, but he's he's you can't. Yeah. God is God. No, I believe that. Because you and have gospel rap and all of that, too. Yeah, you do. You yeah, do. But, it's, but I understand where you're coming from, uh -huh. too, because people are going to say this and say that, but they're going to do that anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course. But you you of dope, course. man. And, and I think God got something in you, girl, that's yeah. totally different than Thank what. You. I ain't had nobody sit there and say no gospel like that in this store. Yeah. I don't care what you, you know, say. I, hey, I'm being real. And I had 500, 500 and some people in here. Uh, 500. And the expressions on your face when you're singing. I ain't even look at them. You're <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, you know, how I'm to enjoy it. I'm looking at this. everything. Yeah, I'm just, you know, you got to see me perform. When you see me perform, you'll be like, I seen you, you perform at the funeral. No, that ain't perform. <laughs> 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 when I get on stage, it's different. You know, I just, I become a completely different Are person. Are you energetic? Very energetic, very animated. Um, sometimes I'll get on stage and then I'll come off and they'll be like, you did. So I'm like, I don't remember half the stuff Where, that I did where on are you stage. performing next? I actually have a show tonight. Um, what? Yes, I saw that. Um, um, man, it's, 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 I, why they be doing this? Like we be stuck over here. Where called, you going, girl? So there, it's a, um, I guess a music kind of group production thing called mm -hmm. So Far, and they mm -hmm. have a So Far Dallas. They they um, are very intimate shows, very intimate settings. Um, it's almost so, like a DF dub pop up. Kind of, kind of a little bit. And they mm -hmm. really, they Where only. Where is it at? Exactly. So they'll tell you the location yeah. maybe a couple of hours really? before. Three uh, hours it's very is posted Yeah, a right. couple of hours before. You have to buy tickets, obviously. But uh, um, well, well, where is it at? Me and baby might get out tonight. We got a little money. She knows you where know, it's at. I actually <laughs> have no idea where it's no. at. No. But can't you, can't you text it to me or yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and give when me. When I find out, I got you. And you send it to us. If you send it to us, but I'm being real. But can you buy tickets at the door, though? I believe you can. Now, what I will say is, I know they're the COVID rules are kind of strict so you either have to have a negative COVID test or a vaccine card I got, yeah, I we got, got all it. that of course so I need I need to be at that thing I want to see you perform this is what I want to see mm -hmm. yeah so this is a little what bit more what songs you you sing it's what I can't tell you you gotta come to the show <laughs> you better be jumping don't have me coming down there for nothing are you gonna sing all your songs you. on your album no I won't sing all of my songs and like I said the setting is very intimate so mm -hmm. it's a little bit more acoustic you're That's not gonna have I need. Yeah. I are to you the there. only performer I need to be there no so I am I am the closing um, act. The closing act. So there might be like two other people before me, but okay. I, I I finish it off. Are you the type of person that when you come into your own, you're going to be late, like Miss Diva late, just walk in like. Late? No, I try to be on time. Like, I was here on time today. No, yeah, yeah you time. were. I try to be on time. But, but for performances, you know, if people always be like, acts always coming in late. No, it, that's cringy. And the reason why I don't like being late is because I always like to do a, like a sound check. That's right. Check. That's I just, right. I, I don't ever want to feel like I'm being rushed. So I will. If I need to be there an hour and a half early, I'll be there an hour and a half early. Just I'm so coming. I can make sure my sound is right. That way when I get on stage, ain't no feedback. We not have no problems, nothing. So I always try to be What on I hate about, like, even sometimes live bands, I hate when the band is louder than you. Yeah. So that's why we. That's you why out. you have sound check. You know, you got to fix the levels. I will be in the building tonight, baby. Okay. Yeah, I can promise ticket. you. If you okay. send me whatever, I'm coming. Okay. It don't take me nothing but a minute. We firing yeah, we up that old go. pacer. <laughs> 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 no, the Escalade will be in the I joint, right? No, no, nah, nah, we'll be there. Uh, Lord, say the same. If God say the same and you send us the information, me okay. and my wife will come. Yeah. Of course, of for course. sure, Give man. Give us somewhere just... to come to tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Date night. What Look. the hell is going on? Twenty years, ain't no date night no 20 more. Twenty years. Uh -uh, you gotta keep it. You yeah. gotta keep it fresh. Keep nah, it we spicy. have a good time, That's man. Good. I'm just messing with. It. We just got back from out of state. She oh, really? gotta quit playing. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we definitely um we definitely want to come and see you. I wanted to go see them guys last night. We had uh uh some guys that flew in that mm -hmm. that, that performed live band. Well, we last forgot night. we had other, yeah, we forgot love. we had more We interviews. had so many interviews. Yeah, y'all should stuck. I mean, do y'all like to go hear live music all the time? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, like Deep Ellum is the scene. Yeah. The Freeman, yeah. We been, uh, yeah, we've been through there. But we don't Trees. like to go anywhere that's too crowded yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah we don't no, like I get crowded. that. I get it. And yeah. the younger the crowd, not so Well, much. you know, T-Ball, the Black Academy, I'll make sure you look at their website because there's always, like, there's a show tonight there. Um, um, two guys, Jay Tillman and Ladarius, they're having a show at T-Ball. I was recently in a show a couple weeks ago, so there are, there's always something, always whether something. it's like poetry, plays, literally. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm coming to see you. I ain't okay. even trying to hear no, none of No, I'm just stuff. saying, you know, I'm trying care. to get my shout outs in. <laughs> T-Ball, <laughs> Black Academy of Arts and Letters, President Curtis King. Y'all gotta get him on the show. How can people get book you if they wanted to book you for a show? 
Um, you can go to my Instagram and click on my email, and that's my booking email. You know, I'll answer it. My manager will answer it. Or um, if you just want to learn more about me, you can go to my Instagram. Um, click on the link and it'll take you to everywhere. You'll be able to go stream the album. You'll be able to watch some live performances. You'll be able to go to my website. You know, you'll get the best of all. Did she say you say you your done? Instagram link is your name? Mm hmm. OK. My Instagram is Jada, J-A-D-A dot Arnell, A-R-N-E-L-L. And then my, you know, TikTok, Jada Arnell, YouTube, Jada Arnell, Twitter. Twitter is more personal. So I just mm -hmm. be on there talking. Have you done many features on other people's? I haven't songs? done a lot. Some of them. There are some that I've done. Um, like if you go on like Apple Music, Spotify, you'll see. But a lot of them I did just like randomly throughout time. So some of them are kind of old. Um, I know there's a guy named Princeton um, who is a very great uh, rapper. He's amazing. I've done a couple features on his songs. Um, if you wanted to work with somebody, who would it be? Right now? Mm -hmm. Artists mm -hmm. or producers? Biggest, Artist. um, smallest, don't matter. Anybody. Who would you want to work with? Somebody that you think that you would make magic with her dope, i have three dope. her summer or chloe bailey hey mm. dope dope yeah. dope I, I see a lot of me there's like each of them is like a little, you? little bit of me yeah, yeah. See? but thank you right so now. much man you've been great on thank the show you. i hope we done you justice yeah i had a Did good you get, time is there anything else that you would like to say before we kick yes. you out the door like if i was your dad and, and i was at your house to, and, you trying to get me out the house <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get me out the house I'm not so going is, to get it, is it any 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 anything that we that that we would like to let your your, your fans, fans know, know. Yeah, um, go stream the album, y'all. Down for oh. me on all streaming platforms, whatever. Amazon, Look Spotify. right into the camera and tell Go them. stream the album, all streaming platforms. Uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, wherever, anywhere. Title, make sure you guys go stream it. Um, post videos, send them to me so I can post y'all. Make TikToks, all of that. Um, let's just keep... You know, R and B alive, y'all. I'm coming and I'm all gas, no breaks, everybody. Hey. So, yeah. Check it, man. That's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we have.